Hey, what's going on guys? It's Josh Rossi. Welcome to another Photoshop Dad tutorial. If you're new to this channel, subscribe uh, to get more videos like this. So what we're gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be showing you how to replace a face within Photoshop. All right, so this is the image that we're going to be working with. So let me show you the before and after. So before, that was the original shot. This is the head replacement. And let me actually show you the, so this is the before, and this is the image that we're gonna be taking from right there. So there's a few tips when you're replacing a completely different face, like somebody else's face, you wanna place it on, on top of another one's. Um, first thing is you have to match up the lighting so super important lighting is coming from this direction the sun's coming from this direction but it's an overcast day so you can see there's not very harsh highlights on her but you can see the lights coming from you know you you can tell here if i zoom up obviously there's a bright highlight right here which means the sun is coming from back over in this direction it's an overcast day um so number one thing match up lighting Number two is you have to match up a face that l is looking in the same direction. You know, not something where somebody's kind of looking off to the left or right. They have to be looking like almost exactly the same. Um, and and then you want to match up focal length. So if you see here, it's kind of hard to match up focal length. You kind of have to guess on this. Um, but basically this is by eye. You're just looking for an image that looks pretty dang similar. And yeah, and there you go. Something like that. So as I was scrolling through Unsplash here, um, let me show you some that would work and some that wouldn't. So as I'm scrolling through all these images, um, an image like that wouldn't work because obviously they're looking off. You need an image where they're looking straight at camera. So let's say this image right here. Why does this one not work? Um, it could potentially work, but she has like a bunch of hair in her face. And I don't, it, it feels a little too overcast. There's not the bright highlights that you're gonna get from here. So that's that's a skip. Um, Let's see, let's click on, click on here again. Next one would be something like this. Why does this not work? Because it's shot in studio. You don't want anything, you, you want to match it up as best as possible. Why does this not work? Because it's shot indoors. Why does this not work? Because the angle's off. You know, the camera's shooting upwards instead of straight on. You guys get the idea. Um, once again, this one works, it's in studio. This one could potentially work. And yeah, you, so anyway, you get the idea. So I chose basically this one right here. So this is how you replace the face. First you want to hit L on the keyboard to go to your lasso tool and you're going to make sort of like a big circle here um, and you want to include the neck as well and the hair. And then what I'm going to do is hit Command C and then Command V to make a copy. And now I'm going to just grab that copy. You can see it's an exact copy. I'm going to drag that on top of my image. So right there. Oops, wrong one. Right there. Okay. So now you got to just match this up. Hit Command T to bring up your free transform tool, and you're just going to make this a little bit smaller. You're just going to have to eye this, something like that. If you want to be really precise, you could drop down the opacity, zoom up here. You can see the layers. I'm going to kind of like I'm go to my free transform tool and turn that, match those up a little bit. Now, sometimes that doesn't work because people's face shapes are different, which that's the case here but you know, it's kind of matching up. Okay, so the next thing I would do is click to make a mask right down here. And we're going to be painting with our brush at 100% um, using black. We're gonna be painting on the white mask to erase around it. So here you go, we're just gonna erase right down here. You wanna actually keep some of the hair, that's gonna help to blend this image. So keep some of that hair there. I'm gonna get rid of the top. You wanna get rid of the edges for sure because you're gonna use the edges of the existing image behind here, that's gonna make it more realistic. So erase this, erase this right down here, and then I'm gonna erase the shirt, and kind of, let's feather let's feather the neck area just a little bit. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna click uh, two on the keyboard, or go down to right around like 20%, something like that, and we're just gonna feather that in. See how that's feathering in, and it's sort of blending in with the color already? So there's that. And we want to erase, actually, let's let's keep that in. So somehow that kind of looks good, just like that. Okay, so there we already have something that is matching up pretty well. And that's because we chose a really good image, you know, a, a copy. Um, 
Now you see here that the lighting is a little bit off, okay, but it still works. See how she has her the highlights over on this side? But on this girl, the highlight is over here. It's it's still kind of in the middle. It's pretty dang close, and it seems to work being that it's it's an overcast day. Okay. Um one thing you could do, which this makes it a little bit weird, is you can flip horizontal. And I guess that might look even better, but sometimes when you flip things horizontal, they just start looking kind of weird like that. See, so I'm just going to leave it just like that. Okay. So the second thing you have to do, once you get like a good shape, you kind of want to move it around until you feel like it looks like a real person. Sometimes you get stuff that, you know, it's like too high and you're like, oh, that just looks weird. You know, so just mess around with it. Now we have to um, copy the color of the background. So how I'll do this is basically going back and forth and I'll analyze the first image. There's a lot of yellows in this image and this image is, is pretty dull. So we're going to add a few things. First of all, let's add a curves adjustment layer and make sure that this is a clipping mask, meaning it's this coloring or this brightness is only affecting this layer. So hold down option or alt and see that little arrow there. Click right there. It's going to make it a clipping mask. And then we're going to brighten this up at the top and bring this down just to add a little bit more contrast, something like that. And now we're going to make another layer, go to a color balance layer. Now an easy way to make this a clipping mask is literally just, just to drag it underneath the other clipping mask. And I'm going to add a little bit of yellows. Let's, let's scoot back here. I need a little bit of cyan. Let's see. Go towards the magenta slightly. You just mess around with the colors here. A little bit yellow. Now let's go to the highlights. Whenever I'm messing around with colors, it's really, really slight. I'm not doing it too much. Okay, so let's let's see how this looks now. Okay, so it's too it's too green. She has a lot more reds in there, and the highlights are a little bit different. So let's add in some magentas right there. These are the highlights, by the way. Let's take a look right there. It's getting a lot closer. Let's add in a little bit more red. Actually, let's go back to the mid-tones. Let's add in some red mid-tones. Okay, so it's getting a lot closer. Now, the next thing I'd do is I'd make another color balance layer. So now that I got that color good, make another color balance layer, go to highlights. And this will, a lot of the times, um, to make highlights pop, you want to make them like white a lot of the time. So this has some tint to it, has some like yellowish tint to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that out. I'm going to take out the yellows and reds by, instead of going towards the reds, I'll go the opposite. And then see, instead of yellows, I'll go towards the blues. And that's making it a lot more white. Check this out. See, there's a tint there, and now it's turning a lot more white. Okay. So let's see how this looks. Looking a lot closer. Let's add in a little bit more red. Let's go back to our top color balance layer. Go to the mid-tones. Let's add in some more red and some more yellows. Now, this isn't going to be adding it necessarily to the highlights. We already fixed the highlights. So now we're doing something like that. Okay. And then one more color balance layer. And basically, we're just going back and forth, sort of adjusting the colors until they start matching. And you see here, I already fixed the highlights, but now I'm adding in a little bit more red highlights. But what that's doing is it's still keeping this. Let me show you before and after. So the highlights don't change that much, but it is changing some of the skin tones around here. All right, so you know, something like that looks pretty dang close. And then the last thing that I would do is above all these coloring layers, we're going to create a blank layer right here and just call this our uh, burn layer. I know a lot of people have different ways of dodging and burning. Um, this is one of the ways that I use. Basically, what dodging and burning is, is just darkening certain parts of the uh, image or lightening them. So this is just my burn layer. Very simple. I'm going to go down to a soft light blending mode. And then I'm going to hit B on my keyboard and make sure I'm at a black color and I'm painting it at around 20%. And here you want to either, you want to kind of like darken certain areas, right? To, to make things match in the image. So I feel like it's a little bit too like washed out. So I'm going to see that's adding a little bit more contrast to the image, having to blend in 
something like that. Let's see. I think I did a little bit too much. It's a race right here. It's basically just going back and forth based on your eye. So this is one way of dodging and burning. The other one that a lot of people do is you go to a curves adjustment layer, bring this down, invert that mask. So for those haters out there that are like, that's not how you dodge and burn. Like I do both. Okay. So this, <laughs> this would be like my burn layer or you could actually do the same up here. Have this be your dodge layer and bring it up like this. So if you don't know what I'm doing, don't worry. I'm making this for the haters. All right. So now I'm brightening up this little spot because it felt a little bit too dark. I want it to match the underground layer. Something like that. Okay, so the other thing is her hair is obviously a different color. So you want to create a blank layer above and call this hair color. Now I'm going to go to a overlay blending mode. And we're going to choose like a purplish color right here. We're just going to paint. Make sure this is a clipping mask once again. Okay, so now I'm just going to paint to blend in some of that hair color right there. Make sure to not get any on the skin. If you do, you can just go back and erase. Got some on the skin over here, just erase that. And then, you know, we're matching up pretty close. If you don't like the exact color that's that you put, you could hit Command-U. Since it's already a clipping mask, you'll have to hit Command-U to bring up the hue and saturation. And you can sort of mess around with that just like that. So you go, that is how you match up a face if it is not the same model. Um, now, if you, do, if you do this with an image that like completely doesn't match, it's gonna look a little bit weird where obviously the lighting is not coming from back here and she has the majority of the light is on that side of her face, okay? So that's why this one, you can see the majority of the light is on this side. Even though you can see the highlight here, it pretty much works. So there you guys go. That's how you replace a face. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Once again, I don't know why you're replacing the face. You don't have to tell me why, or maybe you're doing it for some creative, like funny meme or whatever. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, check out some of the other videos. Remember to subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to become a master at creating amazing images and how to make six figures as a photographer, you can join our online photography school at fulltimephotographer.com. Or to see a preview of what the course is like, you can sign up for my free one-hour training where I cover my top 10 secrets to creating images that sell. I'll also show you my exact marketing plan that has brought me clients like Adobe, Acura, LG, Nickelodeon, and more. So go to fulltimephotographer.com to check it out or just click the button on the screen.